So in this video I'm going to tell you everything interesting that I know about the drug cetirizine. So cetirizine is also known by the brand name Zyrtec, that's probably its most famous brand name, and it is within the group of medicines known as antihistamines, and those are medicines that block a receptor called the H1 or the histamine 1 receptor. So they are H1 antagonists, which means they bind to that receptor, they don't stimulate it, but then they block the uh, natural agonist of that receptor from being able to bind to it. And the natural agonist of that receptor would be the histamine uh, molecule. So they block this receptor from being activated by histamine. And the overall clinical effect of taking this drug is that it achieves an anti-itch effect. And this is why people take them. So there are loads of conditions that produce itchiness. So loads of skin conditions. Uh, probably two of the main ones would be eczema and psoriasis, but also fungal skin infections quite commonly, and especially if it's full-on ringworm uh, or uh, athlete's foot or uh, some sort of dermatophyte infection of the skin. So those are three common skin conditions that produce incredibly itchy lesions on the skin. And often the itching isn't helpful medically. In fact, it often makes the skin condition worse. It might even lead to actually making holes in your skin that then can introduce infection and might not heal, might heal with scars. So itching skin conditions is generally not a good thing. At the very least, it'll make the skin even more inflamed, but it can also make it worse than that. It can cause deep excretions uh, if you itch it hard enough. Uh, that can introduce infection and can scar. So we want people not to itch skin conditions and sometimes it's not possible uh, for them to handle it on themselves. It's not possible for them to control it with sheer willpower. So we give them antihistamines that reduce the desire to itch. So I've written some of this down here. So uh, I have put this list of free skin conditions that are incredibly itchy. Uh, so eczema is a skin condition, very common skin condition, where the skin dries out too much. And it's often uh, related to genetics. So some people have uh, skin that is more prone to drying out because some of the proteins that hold the skin together aren't as good as in other people who are less eczema prone and therefore they don't hold this outer part of the skin together as well and water more easily escapes from the skin's barrier leading to the skin drying out. So if the skin dries out enough it actually results in the skin becoming inflamed and that is really what eczema is and this can be exacerbated by applying uh, creams to the skin or doing other things to the skin that might make it more uh, dried out. So if you're having daily or maybe twice daily really hot baths, that's something that dries the skin out a huge amount. Uh, also certain creams, uh, probably the most nightmarish one would be uh, depilatory creams. So these are creams that people apply to remove body hair and they work by breaking down the body hairs and then they drop off. Uh, so people apply them all over their body uh, and they leave them on for usually about 10 minutes whilst the cream works. It breaks down all the hairs and then they wash the cream off and all their hair comes off with the cream. The problem is it doesn't just break down the hairs, it breaks down the outer boundary of the skin as well, the epidermis, and therefore massively damages the, the outer part of the skin, leads to a lot of water loss and if you're someone who is prone to eczema and you apply one of these creams, you're going to have a massive eczema outbreak. So all sorts of things can worsen eczema by drying out the skin, but fundamentally people who suffer from eczema, it's usually that they have a genetic tendency to it because certain of the skin's proteins aren't as good at holding the skin cells together and water is more easily able to escape. Uh, psoriasis is a very complicated condition, a nasty condition. It's an autoimmune condition that's poorly understood, uh, where the body's immune system for some reason decides to attack the skin. It also is associated with the body's immune system attacking all sorts of other parts as well. So classically the joints, so something called psoriatic arthritis that is associated with psoriasis, where you get autoimmune arthritis. So it's a really horrible disease, psoriasis. Uh, again, it's very, very itchy, so it's an autoimmune disease of the skin. You can Google pictures of psoriasis, it's very recognisable. Uh, it looks very, it looks 
much more marked usually than, than the inflammation that occurs in eczema. And then finally, the one that I said is fungal infections of the skin. And the proper name for that is tinea, which means fungi, and then corporis, which means body. So fungal infections of the skin on the body. So tinea corporis. Uh, so this is where certain types of fungi, and there's multiple different types of fungi that can actually infect the skin and cause this same sort of type of skin rash. Um, so I, I, I don't know their names. They're broadly called dermatophytes. I'll just write that word down for you. So there we go, there's the word dermatophytes here in brackets. So as I say, this is a broad term to get out of having to remember the names of all the different fungi that can infect the skin and cause the same sort of rash. Uh, if you like, you can go onto Wikipedia and look up their huge great names. Uh, they're very, very fancy. Um, but there are loads of fungi in this umbrella term called dermatophytes and they can all infect the human skin and they give rise to the same sort of appearing rash and that rash is called tinea corporis and it's again a very red itchy skin rash and it classically affects areas that are not exposed to sunlight so fungi like warm and wet and moist conditions so they don't generally infect the hands because the hands are usually exposed to the air the fresh air and the sunlight so they don't like that it's usually they infect parts where which aren't exposed to sunlight that much so the feet that's what athlete's foot is uh the um the inguinal region as well the groin region is another classic area to get fungal infections again an area not usually exposed to sunlight, but also the torso, uh, people can get tinea corporis all over there as well. So again, it's a very, very itchy rash that you get in this uh, condition. And again, Google the pictures of these and uh, hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference between them. So overall, the reason I've talked about these is all of these conditions are extremely itchy skin conditions and itching them does not help, in particular in fungal infections. If you itch it, you're going to get fungi all under all over your hands all underneath your fingernails and then if you touch other parts of your skin you risk then spreading that infection to other parts of your skin um, so itching none of these is, is a good idea it never is helpful even though it feels as though it's going to be helpful our body has this great temptation it feels it thinks it's going to help it by itching it but it doesn't it's not a great response it's not a great part of the body it's a part of our design, if you like, that's suboptimal. Uh, so taking antihistamines to take away the itch sensation to stop people itching and making these conditions worse is a good idea.